Welcome to Sew with Monty. Today I want to show you how to drape a lapel and a collar. In the shawl collar video, how to drape, we use the sloper and then we add it on to the front, five inches and one inch down here, to drape just the lapel. This time I want to show you how to do it from scratch off a drape block that has ease added on the side here, three to four inches, and also three inches ease from center front for the lapel and the overlap or the button extension. This way, if you do not want to use this design or something similar to your sloper as your actual body of your garment, you're, you're at free will to do as you wish on that. So we're going to start with this block, and I've added th three to four inches on the side, and I've added three inches in the front. This will be my center front line right here. I want my selvage over here because I'll be cutting it off. I don't incorporate it into my drape area, which is critical. The other thing I want to do, and just randomly place a perpendicular line. This line is just to help you stay balanced on the form. Where it lands is not as critical as the fact that it stays horizontal or very close to it. So let's go to the form and I'll show you how to start draping with this block. So now we have our form and our drape block. And here's the center front line drawn on the drape block. The first thing you want to do is align the center front line at the center front neck, making sure you've got enough here to cover high point shoulder. You need at least an inch, inch and a half up here. So always make sure your drape block is long enough to accommodate that little extra you need here at high point shoulder, which is right at the neck and the shoulder tip or the shoulder uh, seam. So you want to be able to cover that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start pinning from center front neck and I'm going to pin the center front down neck. After that you want to Pin your high point shoulder and make sure you get right on your high point shoulder. What I want to do is I want to get rid of this triangle that's in my way. Now I've got to be careful. I don't want to go too deep. So I'm going to go about an inch above where it seems to want to fold here. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start clipping to release the pressure because I want to create my neckline. Now this, this is going to be different because we're doing a lapel. But initially you want to release the tension here. <clears throat> so you can see what you need to do to do your lapel. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pin my shoulder tip back here. I want to take this slack out of here where the bust is so that I can see what I have. So I'm just going to pin a very basic dart here and clean up the side seam so that there is no slack here. So I just want it straight out. So, so now, let's talk about our lapel. First thing we want to do here is decide where we want the break to be. And the break is where the lapel folds back and releases itself from the center front. I think I'm going to go just above the waist. So my break point is going to be right about an inch and a quarter above. Now, the break point will not be on the center front line. This is very important. You need at least um, an inch overlap here for a jacket so that you have a button extension, so that you can put your buttons on here. An inch will allow you a, a half inch button, so if you're going to do a jacket, you may want more than that. So I'm going to come over one inch from my center front line, like this, and that's going to be my break point. One inch over, one and three quarters up from my waist. Now, to make this break point, you want to cut a slash right to the break point. The rest of this down through here is going to be one, in a, uh, one inch beyond my center front line. The rest of this is devoted to the lapel. So I'm going to take all the pins out here and I'm going to fold back my break, keeping secure my high point shoulder and my break point, which is right here. Now you can see the lapel starting to form. This line right here across the chest represents from the base of the neck across where your collarbone is. The notch on your lapel should be no higher than this. I like to go about a half inch below that line, straight across, because you don't want the, the notch where your collar meets your lapel to be up above your collarbone. So I'm going to make mine a half an inch below this parallel line here. So if I Now, from here, I can design how I want my lapel to be. 
Now you can use chalk, you can use a pen, you can use draping tape on here to decide how you want this to look. So let, let's get our tools and I'll go ahead and show you how to. So I've chosen to use drape tape. You can get this at Amazon or any uh, pattern making supply company. And it's just basically uh, masking tape that's about an eighth of an inch thick so that you can put it on here and take it off and change your mind several times before you actually commit. The next thing I'm going to do is after I get my lapel the shape I want it to be, I will come along with a marker and I'll mark along the edge of my tape and make that my permanent line for the shape of my lapel. The clips along this edge are where my collar will join my neckline. So right here is going to be where my collar might come into my, my neckline. Now that's just the collar edge. So we're just going to put this on here ever so lightly. And and then I need to decide how deep I want my notch to be. So let's say if I'm going to go here, and this is going to be where my notch is, I want to develop how deep I want this notch to be. So I'm going to put the edge here. I'm going to try to keep my collar about 90 degrees on my neckline here. So this is going to represent my collar. And now you can kind of see that the rest of this starts to represent the lapel. So if I want my lapel to be, I'm going to try to make it a little bit square too. I'm going to go a little bit exaggerated here. So now you can kind of see where the notch is going to be for my collar. And this is my notch area and this is my lapel down here. So I'm going to get rid of this line, the continuation of my collar line. And I'm going to get rid of this line so I can start seeing what I have here. Now once I like what I see, then I'll go around it and I will choose inside or outside of my masking tape to be my permanent line and I'll draw in my collar shape and my lapel. Use chalk. I'm doing it on the marker so that you can see it in the video clearly. But see, I'm just drawing in my, my line here. Now, this is an option. This is something that's more an aesthetic opinion than a functional opinion, but I like the base of my lapel to bow slightly so that it has a little presence here. Some people go straight off of here and make a slimmer lapel. So now once you have this, you want to cut along the edge. So I'm just going to take my tape off. Since I've got it marked, I can just cut along the edge of my dotted line. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to cut right on my dotted line and get rid of any extra. reason you want to do this, you don't know if this outside edge is holding your collar in. So you want to get rid of this to make sure nothing is going to surprise you later. See, and that's my lapel, still liking it. So I'm going to continue to take the tape off and cut away on the dotted line. Now, so this would be the notch. And then I want to measure to see what the difference is between my collar and my notch. They don't have to be the same, but it's nice if they're similar in size. Now, I want to flip this up, and I'm going to show you how to drape the collar into this lapel neckline. So now I have my neckline trimmed where I had it clipped prior to my lapel. And I've got it trimmed out nice and clean. I've turned it up to make sure it fits along the neck without climbing up onto the neck. The next part is the collar. And I've cut this block 5 inches tall by 10 inches wide with the grain going this way. Now collars, the grain can go this way or across. It doesn't really have a lot of effect. It depends more on your fabrication. It's best to have your stability going around your neck. So if your fabric has a tendency to stretch, you may want to put it this way and have the stable line going here. And that could be with the grain or it can also be crosswise the grain. So we're going to turn the form around and in the back I'm going to come over one inch past my center back neck and approximately one inch below my center back neck and I'm going to put a pin against the pull so that when I start draping with this it's not going to pull away. Now 
The next thing I want to do is I'm going to put a temporary pin approximately one inch to one and three quarters inch above my, um, my base of my neck pin. That's just to hold this so that as I'm draping, it doesn't get away from me. Now, the next part is we're going to start clipping. Clip the back neck. I'm going to clip right at center back first. And then I'm going to start clipping toward the center back neck so that this starts to lay flat and hugs the neck. See how it's hugging the neck? I want it to kind of hug the neck around through here. And I'm going to clip right to high point shoulder. That's real critical that that is nice and snug, just like that. And then I'm going to put a pin at high point shoulder and a couple of pins in the back neck now that I have it clipped and it's laying very pretty. So a couple of pins right at the base of the neck just to hold it. Because we're about to come into where these two are going to align with the lapel. So the lapel's laying here. I want to take my collar and I want to make it lay with my lapel. So I'm going to put a pin right here, right at this break point. Now it's, it's stressing out, as you can see. It's making little, what I call, frown lines. So we need to relax it a little bit. So I'm going to clip up to it, but not through the shape of the neckline on the lapel. See how it's laying much nicer here? Still hugging the neck. So once I have this, and all the stress lines are out, we're going to pin it right here. This time I want to pin just the muslin of the jacket to the collar. I don't want to pin the form because I want to be able to roll this back and see what it looks like. I'm going to roll back the lapel from the break line and see how the collar and the lapel are fitting together. So I'm going to turn it down and I want to see what's going on here. See that's what I'm looking at as far as my collar goes. Now, the collar is much too wide here, so I want to come back in and figure out what the width is going to be. Now, remember the back, we've already established the height, so that's good. So I'm just going to pin this down here to secure it. That way I can play with the rest of this collar and get it the shape I want. So I'm going to come back in here, and I want to make my two inch collar length right here. So I'm just going to put a piece of tape there and then check my length with my tape measure, two inches. So two inches for the collar goes right here. And then I want to check and see what the notch opening is. So the notch is going to be one and three quarters. And I like one and three quarters. That looks good. So from here, I want to establish what the shape of my collar is going to look like going around the back. Now you can do this with a pen, or you can use your drape when I come in here and clip out where my notch is going to be. Line. And then I'm going to cut this off and remove the tape. And we're going to take a look at the collar. Now, tape is going to come off. And we can adjust the collar in the back. We can do whatever we need to make this collar look good. I'm liking it in the front. It's picking up a little bit right here. So I'm going to readjust this in the back and reseat my center back line. See how much nicer it's laying now? So I like what I see. So now it's time to start marking where everything's going to be. So we want to mark this point. This is critical because that's where the two meet to create the break or the notch. Keep saying break. And then I want to mark where center back is. So this is my center back neck and this is center back neck here. I only want an eighth of an inch past that. So I want to refine this little curve a little bit. I don't want it to be quite so bulky. And okay, that's that looks much better, much, much better. So now I'm, I'm just going to pin it here. So you can see it's not collapsing. The break is or the notch is laying flat. It's below my collarbone line. So I'm just going to draw in where my center back line is. And then I'm going to take all this off, go to the table, and I'll explain to you how it goes from here into a pattern. So now I have my line, my back neck, my front neck, my front neck of my jacket, and here's my shoulder, my high point shoulder. That is the point that is right here on my collar. So it's very important that you keep that marked, high point shoulder, so that it fits exactly back into your neckline. So this is high point shoulder. This would be my shoulder seam on my collar. So shoulder seam. Now I'm going to true this up a little bit. This is now 
the back neck, center back neck with a fold. This edge here, as you can see, it's kind of rough along the edges here, but I want to start off square back here. So I want this collar to be very square right here. And then it will have a slight arc in it. This down here, too, must be square. It's very important that this is square. Now, as you see, there's a little bit of shape here. I want to keep this shape because what that's doing is accommodating for my shoulder. So if you ever make a collar and it has a little bit of a dip in it right here, a little S-curve, so to speak, leave it. That's helping fit across your shoulder. That makes a very nice collar. It's not as clumsy looking if you have that. So anytime you're draping, if you see that, don't fill it in. See this little dip in there? Leave it be. So this is basically the shape of my collar. So I'm going to cut it out with my larger scissors, walk it to the neckline, and then the next step here would be to turn this into a pattern and make a beautiful collar.